Hello everyone. Welcome to Learn at Home with VIA. My name is Lisa Taylor and I'm an art teacher at the Jersey Shore Area School District. As artists, we're always inspired by things around us. And I wanted to share with you today what inspired me to create this artistic problem for you. Number one. We saw naturalist Will Benson and his team set up some cameras throughout the rainforest in the very first program that you watched, Research with Cameras Undercover Jungle. And in that uh, video, that really kind of inspired me because they were watching animals in their natural environment because that's what naturalists do. And they were able to capture a lot of footage. And that was really interesting to me. Number two. In the second program today, Jungle Canopy Research, they talked about how the canopy of the rainforest has not been explored that much. And so when they were showing the um, scientists who were being raised up, up into the trees, the one guy was really excited because he had seen what he called the holy grail of praying mantis. And he mentioned that he hadn't seen one of those in 20 years. So that kind of thing inspired me as well for this project. Inspiration number three. I don't know about you, but I have always been fascinated with animals ever since I was a child. I love to read about animals, where they lived, what they ate, what they were able to do, what their environments were like. Um, I always just thought that was very fascinating. And I always thought I'd want to be a biologist or something someday, but that never happened. Inspiration number four. I love wildlife photography. Some of the most amazing animal pictures that I've ever seen were taken by wildlife photographers who filmed them in their natural environments. And finally, inspiration number five. I have always wondered since I was a kid, have we discovered every animal or every insect that is out there? And there are so many remote places in the world that believe it or not, have not been explored in depth. And so that just kind of gets my imagination going as to what kind of creatures we've never heard of or seen before. So here is your artistic challenge today. You're gonna create a new species, or you could make multiple species. So first, you're gonna draw your species. Then, you're going to name it. You're going to write a description and things that you could think about are where does it live? Describe its characteristics. What does it eat? I'm sure you can think of other things that you could write about. And finally, we're going to add color to it. Now, before we can do this project, we need to talk about materials. I don't know about you, but I don't always have the materials on hand and you might not be able to get out to a store and get them right now. So I just wanted to come up with some solutions that we might be able to take care of in order to do this project. So when you're looking for supplies to create this, because it is a drawing, um, you could probably use just about anything you have around the house. Uh, maybe you have index cards, maybe you take notes in other classes, you could use index cards. If you have a printer, you might have some copy paper, and so that would be something that you could use. You could always recycle an envelope, whether it's a new one or it's one that you received in the mail. There's ways that you can recycle that. You may have cereal boxes or other boxes that you've recycled, and because we can't always take everything to the recycle centers right now, you might have some of those lying around. I know I have a whole bunch of boxes right now. In order to draw our project, a simple pencil is good enough. Um, if you don't have a pencil, crayon would work. Markers or any writing utensils um, just to draw your picture initially and to write about it. And then to add color, our final step, any supplies that you have around the house, colored pencils, crayons, markers, if you've got paint, Okay, so I showed you that supply list that I suggested. Um, I don't have drawing paper or painting paper here. I have some in my art room, but I can't get to my art room right now. And I don't know about you, but maybe, you know, you can't get out like you normally would 
I try to stay home as much as possible. So I've kind of gone around my house and I've collected some materials that you might use. Um, the most obvious for me, because I have a printer, is copy paper. Now it's thinner, so if you want to paint when we add color, um, I don't know that you'd want to paint too much on this. You wouldn't want to get really sloppy with the paint, um, but you could use colored pencil or marker. Um, now, I don't want this whole sheet because I'd like it to look kind of like it's a photograph size. So what I could do is fold it in half, and I think I'd probably fold it again, and that would be a good size for a photograph. Um, and if I want to make four different creatures, I could actually just cut on those fold lines and have four separate pieces uh, for my photographs. Um, I also found this. This is just a tablet that was, actually I forgot about it. It was in a drawer. But if I took a sheet of this, I could make a photograph out of that. So that's an option as well. Depending on how thick your paper is, that's kind of kind of dictate what kind of materials you use when you add color. Now my kids have lots of index cards and we have these really big ones in the house. Um, I actually thought I found a few smaller index cards. Oh, there's one right here. So there's these two sizes. Um, I think this is kind of big. So what I'd probably do, again, I'd probably just fold it in half. And so I could actually cut it and then I'd have two separate papers. So if I was being really creative and I could think of more than one species that I wanted to create, I could make two photographs here. Um, on the back then you've got those nice lines that you could write about your, your species or your creature. Um, and then of course this size is good. This is I wouldn't do anything to this. This is a perfect size. It's almost like the size of a trading card too. So that would work. Oh, an envelope. Um, this is a security envelope, so the problem I have with this is if we were to cut it open, you can't write anything on this side. So what you could do is I could just seal it shut like that. And this is way too long for a photograph, but I'm thinking if I kind of folded it in half, that could give me the right size. Um, and so I could just cut this and have two of these. So there, now I've got front and back. Um, so I could make my picture probably on the nice side and then on the side with the fold here, I could write about my species. So I actually have two in that envelope. Um, another thing, I have an old folder. It's kind of crummy. It's, it's my old printer information folder. It's got a lot of dirt on it, but if I open it up, it's kind of clean in there. So I could cut out a piece, and I believe I have the piece that I cut out here. So I got this from this. So I could use this side. Um, now the only thing is this is a nice clean side for me to draw on. But on this side, I've got part of the title that I put on my folder. But you might have a, a cleaner file folder around, and this is thicker, so it is kind of like thicker like a photograph, and you could probably use just about any um, material that you wanted to paint on this. And then, last but not least, I can't lie, this is my favorite kind of cereal. Um, if you open up your cereal box to the inside, you get a nice, brownish kind of grayish color. Your photograph doesn't have to be white, um, but you could certainly cut a piece for this. So what I did was I cut out a chunk already, as you can see, um, but then I thought it's got this side. So I could draw on this side, but now how do I write about it? So I just cut another piece and then I could use scotch tape or glue and glue them picture to picture so that I have the clean side on both. So I could draw here, I could write here. So those are some options that you might wanna consider if you don't have drawing paper or painting paper like me. Um, so those are some things that you can think about. So I don't know about you, but I'm about ready to get started. But one of the things I was thinking that might help you when you're thinking of like, what kind of creature could I create and where might it live, is to kind of review the information that you probably learned in fifth grade um, about the rainforest and 
the four layers of the rainforest. So in order to do that, I just wanted to kind of explain what those layers are, what kind of animals might live in those layers, and it might inspire you um, further to come up with some kind of species that you could create yourself. So there are four layers to the rainforest, and the top one is the emergent layer. These trees are extremely tall and they go beyond the canopy layer, so they're the trees that stick out at the top. Species that live in this layer are gliders or flyers, and common ones are eagles and macaws, bats, some insects, monkeys can be up there, also squirrels and butterflies. The majority of rainforest species live in the canopy. This layer has overlapping trees that serve as kind of a roof um, for all of the things that are below them. Tree frogs, lizards, monkeys, rodents. Um, there's a lot of different species that live in the canopy layer. The understory has a lot of plants, climbing plants and ferns and young trees. Um, this area receives little sunlight. The understory layer includes insects, bees, butterflies, birds, geckos, snakes, lizards, jaguars, monkeys. The darkest part of the rainforest is the forest floor. This layer contains things that have fallen from the three layers above it and there are large animals on the forest floor, like tigers, jaguars, elephants. So I have a pencil and I have an extra fine Sharpie that I happen to have around the house to outline. And I've got this envelope that I had cut in half and sealed. So I'm gonna use that for my photograph. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a box for the picture. So it's almost like a Polaroid camera. Um, and so down here, I'll come up with a title for my creature. Now I've been thinking about what kind of creature I could make. And I remember they were talking about um, how worms and earthworms are really important to aerate the soil. And so I thought, what if an earthworm has come up with some kind of adaptation um, in the forest. So I thought of like maybe a bucket mouth, like a bucket on a heavy piece of equipment. So I'm gonna make kind of like a bucket and I'm gonna put some teeth here and I'm kind of giving it an underbite because that would really help an earthworm scoop up the organic soil. And of course, I don't know about you, but if I were a creature in the rainforest, I don't think I'd realize that, uh, you know, somebody had a camera, so I might be kind of shocked when my photograph is taken. There's always these like really thick segments on worms. So I'm gonna make a segment right here. And then I'm just gonna kind of make the worm wriggle around because I thought of another adaptation because the forest floor is really dark. So what if through time they've developed a light, kind of like an angler fish has a light or something to attract other creatures. This worm has a light that helps them see on the darkest layer of the rainforest. I'm going to make those little lines where the worm reticulates. I think that's what it's called anyway. And then I think I'm going to make it on 
a dead leaf, so I'm going to draw that behind my worm. So I'm going to make, this is part of the stem. And going through the back of this whole thing is a leaf that it's working on. There's some of the veins of the leaf. So I need to make it stand out. So I happen to have this marker. Now this is a permanent marker. So if I were going to use this, I would definitely be able to paint over it. But if you don't have a permanent marker and you wanna outline it, one thing you could do is draw really dark with your pencil or maybe use a black colored pencil um, if you use like a thin marker, like a Crayola marker, that is water-based. So if you do paint, it's going to smear. So that's just something to be aware of. Now, as you can see, I outlined, and as I work on my projects, I often kind of alter my drawing a little bit. That's where I kind of improve it once I do the outline portion. So I definitely need to erase all of the pencil lines that I can still see. All right, so that is a pretty good um, drawing, I guess. Okay, so I have come up with some different supplies that I have to add color to my species. And so I like colored pencils because, I don't know, you can get some light and dark uh, tints and shades with colored pencils and I just like the way they flow. So I'm gonna use colored pencil first. So in the background, I think I want to make it kind of a darkish color. Now I could use um, colored pencil, but I wanted to show you how you can create paint using markers if you don't have paint on hand. So I have a cup of water and a brush, and I'm going to grab a marker and some tin foil. Now if you don't have tin foil at home, you could probably use saran wrap. So if I were to just use a brown marker, I don't think I'd really like that color much. So I'm going to create a paint from the brown marker. I think this is the one. Oh yeah, that's a little bit juicier. Now, while I could use the brown marker for the background to look like dirt, um, I'm gonna create paint. So I'm just coloring on the foil. And as I color and add that pigment, it's just gonna kind of move around on that foil. You can kind of see it's already moving. And if I take a brush, now I don't want a lot of water on my brush, but if I take my brush and go around it, I can pick up some of that paint Oh yeah, that looks kind of like a dirty. Forest floor. 
Oh, looks like I'm out of paint. Oh, this is the one that's dried out, I believe. So all I have to do is add more color. And you can do this with any, if you have a whole box of markers and you've got different colors, you could definitely create artwork by painting with those markers like I'm showing you now. So I'm just gonna kind of go around this leaf. Now I painted, I'm gonna paint over. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up or not. Oh, yep. You can see where I used that permanent marker. It was a Sharpie for the yellow. And as I painted over it, it's still there. It did not smear it or cover it. So that looks kind of cool because it does look like it's glowing. So I finished my drawing and I've added color to it. Now it's time to name my species. So I was trying to think of a clever name for the species, uh, what it can do, maybe what its characteristics are. So I called this the luminous aerinator because worms kind of aerate the soil. And then on the back is my description. So I kind of acted like I've been uh, taking photographs in the rainforest and just kind of some short notes as to what the species is and what I've found. So I wrote, species found by accident while searching the forest floor for my lens cap. This species of worm has adapted to its environment with its large bucket-like mouth that can speed through organic material, much like the bucket on heavy machinery. This hybrid's innovative tail contains fluorescent proteins like that of a jellyfish to light its way through the darkest part of the rainforest. And then I just put a date, discovered 512 of 2020. Well, before I say goodbye, I just wanted to show you the second species that I created using the other half of the envelope. This one I called the speedy spider sloth. And on the back I wrote, this speedy spider sloth was discovered in the canopy layer of the rainforest. It was very fast and I was surprised at how it could move. It developed opposable thumbs allowing it to grasp instead of hanging on limbs. And the adaptation of webbing like a spider or a spider man allowed it to swing from vine and limb getting around the rainforest in record time. Well, before I go, I just want to thank you. I had a lot of fun today. I hope that you enjoyed the two previous programs that aired and that you found inspiration from them just like I did. I'm also hoping that the tips that I gave you for finding materials around the house were helpful so that you can not only create this project, but maybe other projects that you have in mind while you're at home. Thank you very much. I had so much fun. And thank you for watching Learn at Home with VIA.